Is technological progress necessary to expand and maintain an interstellar empire? Or can we conquer the galaxy without it? In this video, we'll be trying to play Stellaris without researching a single technology. Of course, we will also be throwing in a dash of roleplay too. And so, without any further ado, I present for your delectation, the Othari Crusade. Now, this is a very special race that I've concocted in order to try to attempt this challenge. That challenge being the No Technology Challenge. As I've mentioned before, what are we playing with? What are we dealing with here? Well, we are of course fanatic spiritualists. Only the tenacity of a fanatic spiritualist could force an empire, force a population to give up on all technology. And the tenets of our dogma basically state that technology is bad. Why is that? Well, I've gone for a bit of a role play origin here, and that is with the Remnant Start. Our capital, our homeworld, is a relic world. It used to be the seat of a vast and powerful empire, the Empire of Altharia. But deep in the distant past, our ancestors, our forebearers, unleashed a cataclysm not only upon our capital, but across a myriad of worlds which almost led to our destruction. Relegated and forced to occupy only a single world, for generations, the survivors of that cataclysm eked out a meager existence living amongst the rocks. And it was only through our deep fanatic beliefs, our deep religious beliefs, that we were able to survive as a society to unify in this apocalyptic world and reclaim some of our former glory. Now, something we do believe because of all this is that technology is not only wrong, it should be hunted down, dismantled and demolished. Only the old, reliable, basic technologies that we have had for generations on our world can remain if we want to guard ourselves from repeating the mistakes of the past. So whilst we are a remnant, and that does mean we will get access to some technology caches, which we will be taking, don't worry, so we might get a couple of technologies, we won't be doing any other research. I'm going to be dismantling all of our labs, we're going to be burning down the heretics, and we're going to make sure that we don't have any other heresy around the galaxy. Now that makes us into a crusade. Led by our exarch here, Hostus Herennius, we will crusade across the stars to bring enlightenment and the freedom from technological burden to all other civilizations in the galaxy. To guard against any heresy, our civilization is ruled by exalted priests, the religious council consisting of the wisest and most pious members of the clergy. But amongst the priesthood, the politics is cutthroat. That's going to give us some nice edict upkeep benefits and increase our code breaking a little bit. And of course, no crusade would be complete without a dogmatic belief in authoritarianism. And in terms of our pops, we are traditional, charismatic and somewhat long lived. But due to our long exposure, our long time living on Altharia, basically a dump, we are a little bit wasteful and of course a little sedentary. Here are the settings we are going to be using today. We are going to be having the crisis 100 years early and we're playing on Grand Admiral. Let's see how it goes if we can actually survive without researching a single technology. And if you're enjoying this video please crusade in the name of that like button. For 10,000 years the Othari people have struggled on their ruined world. Little knowledge remains of the great cataclysm that sundered their empire and their worlds. That which has survived the centuries does so as myths and whispers. In the distant past, from their seat of power on Otharia, the Othari people ruled over a vast and bountiful empire. A thousand worlds paid tribute to their greatness. But in their hubris, the ancients of Otharia thought themselves untouchable. They pushed the boundaries of knowledge, creating new and terrifying technologies. And then, one day, the ships stopped coming. Cut off from its empire without warning, without food or raw materials, the populous city planet of Atharia became a prison. Brother turned against brother as society crumbled. Fighting for such basic necessities as food and heat, much was lost. A dark age reigned for generations, but with time the Othari people reclaimed much of what was lost, though the trauma of this dark age left scars. Scars that run deep. And now we come back to the galaxy, ready to save all from the dangers of technology. 
here on the blue marble or somewhat grey marble of Altharia, the Inquisitors are saddened to tell us, saddened to bring this news to the High Council, that heresy has been found. After months of work, months of investigative analysis, they have uncovered a research laboratory. Yes, the very core of our beliefs has been challenged here. Somebody is attempting to bring about the apocalypse, bring about Armageddon, and we shall crush them immediately. This scientific cabal, led by the evil Proclus Verbenius, has been found and will be purged. Each of them have been permanently removed from the position of living. And this is how things should stay. Now whilst scientists are inherently evil, we all know that, don't forget, they bring us uh, damnation and destruction in their path. Explorers, however, are an essential part of the expeditionary fleet. But we must be ever vigilant. The likes of Lucius Ergolanius, who could so easily turn from the light of religious dogma to the dark depravity of scientific inquiry, must be guarded and watched. The planet of Orster here was once a core world of the Othari Empire. Now we have brought it back into the fold of the Othari Crusade, and we will turn its resources to the expansion of the fleet. Luckily, these colonial remains can serve as a base of operations, making it easier to recolonize this planet. As we make our first tentative steps out into the cosmos, we have discovered heresy everywhere. We must guard ourselves, people, guard ourselves against this. Our faith must be supreme. The Cybrex, a collective consciousness of machines, yes, automatons, the very peak of heresy, I tell you, well, they seem to occupy space around here some 600,000 years ago. Our explorers now turn to archaeology to uncover more of their decrepit secrets. The more Othari explorers uncover about the Cybrex, the more terrifying the picture becomes. This ancient race of genocidal machines occupied Othari space long before our ancestors had even learnt to harness fire. Our explorers have made disturbing parallels between their crusade amongst the stars to wipe out organic life and our crusade to save it. Given the harmful nature of this information, were it to be made public, the High Council has decreed it must be classified and sealed within our vaults. They have banned all future exploration of Cybrex sites. Our explorers are beginning to uncover some facts about the nature of the Othari Empire and the cataclysm that befell it long ago. It is clear from the surrounding hyperlane network that a large factor in the apocalypse was the destruction of most hyperlane routes. There is now only a single hyperlane route connecting Othor and the surrounding core worlds with the rest of the galaxy, and we can only assume this is a new route plotted by our explorers. What kind of destabilizing effects this had on our civilization are lost in the deep past, but we can only assume the galaxy may have moved on without us. Whilst watching a light show in the Epsilon Eridani system, the explorer Drusus Cotius has strayed away from the line. Whilst exploring and uncovering an anomaly, he has constructed a new technology, blue lasers. Now, whilst this technology will not be used except under the most dire of circumstances, we must of course adhere to the tenets of our faith, and unfortunately, Drusus Cotius will be put to death. Whilst clearing the ruined arcologies of our homeworlds, the explorers there have uncovered technology. They have uncovered the secrets of building robotic workers. We will, of course, be doing nothing with this whatsoever. We will submit this to the archives to be hopefully lost and forgotten with time to be kept safe. Yet those excavation teams have again been put to death. Do not worry, noble citizens, our crusade will be safeguarded from heretic elements. The two main factions guiding and competing for political power within the crusade are first and foremost the Council of Traditional Values. They are what you could think of as the spiritualist faction and the Crusader Council, an authoritarian faction which believes in the subjugation and oppression of the other aliens we know must be out there as the writings teach us. 
For over 20 years, our exploratory fleet pushed deeper and deeper into the galaxy. The surviving scraps of star maps have proved totally useless for navigation, but we are building up a new map of the surrounding space. On our western border, there have been troubling reports of a first contact, or perhaps indeed a second contact. Most records from before the Sundering are actually woefully incomplete. Maybe these aliens will have something to teach us about our own past. The first new race that we have discovered are called the Gnogian Hive, according to our translators. In studying them, we have improved the resource output of our basic workers. However, this geshed out consciousness, this single hive mind, does not seem to share the tenets of our faith. In fact, they augment themselves with technological progress, and therefore the blasphemers must burn. To that end, the Exarch Hostus Herennius has commissioned the construction of a grand fleet. The time for crusade is almost upon us. We will fulfill our holy mandate and save the galaxy from the horrors of technology. There must be war. God wills it! And so sound the drums of war. Crusader forces push deep into the enemy territory. The first real and active resistance is encountered here, just in their capital system of Genox. However, it is not enough to prevent the hive mind from being subsumed. Unfortunately, our explorer Decimus Atreus, in strict contravention to our laws, whilst exploring the debris uh, given up by this hive mind, has uncovered the secrets of fusion technology. This does of course mean that unfortunately he must immediately be put to death, but we will take this secret, this technology of fusion power and only use it in the most dire of circumstances. Hidden, dark and deep in the vaults, not to be used unless at the uttermost end of need. The Hive is dying. They have issued an unconditional surrender to the Crusade. And with that, we now have complete control of their worlds, complete control of their space. And just as we suspected, they have been conducting research on their worlds. This is the heresy we are fighting against, ladies and gentlemen. This atrocity will not stand. Following the disastrous first contact and military occupation of the Gnogian Hive, the Othari Crusade has attempted to find a place for Gnogian citizens in our society. Inexplicably, however, the Gnogian have become unresponsive within days of our successful liberation campaign concluding. Instead of becoming part of our great purpose, they seem to have lost the will to live, refusing food or communication until their bodies grow weak. This has created something of an ecological catastrophe. On all of our new worlds, our colonists on these once Gnogian worlds are having to dispose of billions of decaying Gnogian corpses. In the meantime, our great exploratory fleet have found a new alien empire, a kingdom of mammalian bipeds with remarkably similar language and grammatical structure to ourselves. We can only hope that they too follow the path of light and reject all scientific research. We now tentatively have sent out our Othari citizens to uncover the true nature of these new neighbors. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by following the link down in the description and purchasing something from the Humble Bundle store. Until September 1st, you can get your hands on the Paradox turn-based bundle for under 11 euros. This bundle includes Age of Wonders Planetfall Premium Edition, Battletech Mercenary Collection, along with four other items. Simply follow the link down in the description to get your hands on this great deal. Support charity and support this channel. You can also just donation and choose how much of your purchase you want to go to this channel, the publisher's paradox, and the charity specifically to customize where your money will go. The United Kingdom of Great Zuma and Northern Keg are harboring secrets. Deep inside this civilization, our spy, Vipiscus Hortensius, has uncovered the fact that they are conducting scientific experiments and scientific research. 
The Exarch has immediately ordered that we begin hostilities and bring this empire, bring these worlds into the fold. Only then will we be able to do a proper audit and uncover the truth of their heresy. God wills it! God wills it! Whilst we have been technically outmatched by superior design and construction, this is the blasphemy that we have warned against for generations. We have cunning and tactics on our side. In a daring move, our fleets have penetrated deep into the heart of Zoom and Space, and we are about to take their capital planet. This is the heart of heresy, and it must be rooted out and culled at the stem. And it runs deeper than we knew. The Zoomans have been constructing automatons to take the place of regular biological life. This is a flagrant disregard for the rights and ideas that bind together our life forms. And before any amongst the council might think to say this war was unjustified, we have seen clear evidence here of research laboratories. For their crimes, the Zuman people have been forced into a state of slavery, of domestic servitude. This is their new place in the grand hierarchy of the Crusade. Additionally, they have been sent far and wide from their previous homeworld, their previous capital, to take on new and important roles in our civilization. Our explorers tell us that there is a whole wealth of uh, technology locked away in the debris of the Zoom and ships. We will of course do nothing to actually research these technologies and if any if anyone uncovers the exact workings they will be put to death like has been the case yet again we've had another heresy from an explorer to our south the Velet Citizen Republic stands against the ultimate goals of the Athari Crusade and therefore our forces must move ever onwards. Our battle-hardened crusaders were met with little resistance by the Velet peoples. Though they put up a valiant last stand far away from their capital, it did little to deter our inexorable advance. The marks of science are everywhere in this war. From the bizarre new weapons to the inexplicable industrial machinery we have uncovered on the worlds we have occupied. We cannot escape the conclusion that the Citizen Republic has lost its way. Thank all the prophets that we have arrived just in time to save them. With another successful crusade, we bring more worlds into the fold, and this time we are going to give the Velet Citizen Republic a unique chance, a unique opportunity to change their ways. They are now a vassal under our great crusading might. And once more, we found heresy here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, more research labs, more science, more problems. The salvagers and scrappers, well, they are, I would say, aliens after our own heart. They take, scrap, repurpose ancient destroyed vessels and for a small fee, give them to us to be used in our glorious crusade. And it seems the Zoomans really haven't had the message yet. After one war, we did take their previous capital and dismantle their laboratory facilities, but now they have insidiously grown yet more scientific research facilities. Just a stone's throw away from what is now Othari Crusade space, they flout our rules, they flout the very fabric of our civilization. Clearly, through violence, we can teach them the error of their ways and force them to be our subservience and the Zuman forces stand no chance against the might of our Great Crusade. Unfortunately, our explorers have recovered yet more technology. This means some of the best minds will be put to the sword. And with the final outposts of the Zuman Republic, the United Kingdom of Great Zuma and Northern Keg defeated, this has brought the Empire to heel. With the inclusion of the Zuman people, they have progressed from being mere domestic servants, cogs in the machine of crusade. They now have the right to reside uh, free from enslavement anywhere in Othari space. After 60 years of near constant expansion, our holy crusade now controls a vast area. Hundreds of stars, dozens of planets and two client kingdoms all swear allegiance to Otharia. Only time will tell if we can succeed in our noble pursuit and regain our birthright, a new Othari empire. For the sake of all life, 
the natural order of things must be restored. The political situation of the galaxy is shaping up to be rather interesting. The next target for the crusade is the Euro Combine. Again, materialist, we can only assume, and when I say assume, don't worry, we do have clear and proper intelligence here that they are yet more scientific people attempting to do disgusting scientific research. Not only that, but an entire nation, the Mechazar Sentients, a nation of automatons, is a vassal state under the Yuru. We can only assume their unholy purposes intertwined with these robots somehow. The Yuru do have a defensive pact with one of the preeminent nations in the galaxy, the League of Immur, a plutocratic oligarchy that call the Ringworld of Imaria their home. We are only just beginning to uncover information about the League only by breaking apart these two large allied blocks as League space stretches from the south of the galaxy all the way up to the very north of the galaxy as well. They are the power to be feared, but only by breaking the Euro apart from their allies can we hope to impose our will on these aliens. It is clear to further the goals of our crusade, we must convert the Velet Citizen Republic into our Prospectorium. That should give us the resources to crack through the hard outer layer of the Euro Combine. Five years of politics and diplomacy. Five years of intrigue and plot. Five years without war has achieved nothing. The Yuru still cling to their beliefs and refuse to abandon their heretical ways of scientific research, much to the detriment of all life. The League, a vast and mighty conglomerate leading a smattering of lesser empires, refuses to be moved. Our arguments and our pleas have fallen on deaf ears. Their defensive pact with the evil Yuru remains in place. Within our crusade, the more righteous elements are now calling for war. We have as yet held these voices at bay. However, I fear that we may soon find ourselves embroiled in a war of galactic proportions. A war that we may not win. I know I err close to blaspheming my lords, but this is the truth of it. The arrival of the Space Storm is probably the perfect time for the Crusade to strike. Long have we waited to break through the Yuru Combine, and now we have the perfect opportunity. Whilst the League of Emir are busy fighting in a foreign war, which does seem to be striking quite close to home here, we will attempt to deal a crippling blow here to our rivals. Though the odds are firmly stacked against us, Hopefully with the help of the United Kingdom of Great Zuma and Northern Keg's fleets, well, when we at least combine their fleets with our own, we should have a force that cannot be resisted. Under cover of the Space Storm, what is surely a bounty from the gods, and with the hope that a fast war could knock out the Yuru before their allies even have a chance to react, our crusade marches on. We must bring these heretics to justice before they risk the safety of the galaxy. And we have engaged the Rue forces in a lightning battle at the edge of our space. Due to the space storm, neither of us knew the disposition of enemy forces, and it seems we've engaged in multiple locations simultaneously. Fortunately, it does seem like we have carried the day here at this wormhole, and that may be a crippling blow to the Yuru's military efforts. Though at the southern part of our empire, the technology of our enemies cannot be underestimated. Somehow, they have appeared through foreign space and are now targeting our systems. One can only assume the spatial anomaly at Diam is to blame. The Yuru are pushing back. They are retaking their systems piece by piece, and this could be a slight problem for us. The Yuru are splitting up their forces. They do want to make an effort to retake the Lost Worlds that have been taken so far. Hopefully, this is where we can catch them out. It's quite a large stacking here, but if we can take this system and retain it, That'd be quite useful. So we're gonna try to jump through. And there goes the space storm. Oh goodness me, this is gonna be a real big engagement. And there go the United Kingdom first. Our forces are coming in slightly behind. And that does seem to be quite an overwhelming victory. Minimal casualties on our side and hopefully large casualties for the enemy. There are battles going on everywhere. Heroes and villains on both sides. 
League forces are pressing down on the Crusades homeworld and that means that our front deep in Yuru space must succeed in their mission to knock the Yuru out of this fight. The League are pressing very deep now. They're in United Kingdom space and they are about to reach the Epsilon in the shipyards, the main shipyards we have been using for this campaign. The split front of the Crusade has exposed some underlying weaknesses in our society. With every effort and emphasis placed on the offensive, there has been little thought spared for the world united under our flag. Their purpose has been solely for the continuation of the Crusade, the upkeep and replenishment of the fleet. We have been a people united under this single purpose, but with our worlds burning and our children dying, whilst the fleet is far away, leading the righteous cause on a distant front. Questions are being asked about the safety and structure of a Thari society. What good is our crusade if we cannot keep our people safe? Calls for surrender are mounting as more worlds fall to League forces. Where is the fleet? Where are our defenses? With the occupation and subjugation of Ura, the home of the Ura Combine, we are now finally able to win this war before the League forces penetrate too deeply into what is regularly known as Authori space. The death of Exarch Hostus Herennius, the great leader who has led us from the once simple backwater of Otharia on a crusade as now a fully fledged and large member of the galactic community. We represent one quarter of all the space available in the galaxy. But we face something of a crossroads. There is great debate in our society. Tullus Sabusius, the governor of Schimmel's world sector, currently proposes an agenda of scientific discovery, a research leap, so to speak. We should, according to Tullus, re-engage with the idea of researching, re-engage with the scientific process. It should no longer be held back from our people. It is the main cause of our current troubles. Opposing Tullus, the front runner is Proculus Floronius, fertility preacher, champion of the people, and the agenda of Floronius, however, is a new generation. Yes, we must put aside the mistakes of the past, those mistakes being greater technological progress, and we must focus on the generation of today. Unfortunately for Tullus, Tullus never survived to the election day. This gave a simple and easy victory to Floronius. The disaster that befell some of our outlying systems, our outlying sectors in the previous war, as they were taken and subjugated briefly by the League of Immur, has forced the High Council to reconsider its use of the forbidden technology. X-ray lasers, small railguns, improved shielding, basic computers on our spaceships have all been implemented now in an attempt to prevent the stagnation we have seen in previous years. This has not been revealed and shall not be revealed to the regular Harankin file of our civilization, of the Crusade, only you esteemed members of the High Council are privy to this secret. The destruction of the Yuru does leave the way open for the Mechazar sentience to be eliminated. As they were a vassal, these disgusting automatons will be taken, they will be deconstructed, they will be purged, we're gonna take their parts and we're just gonna put them in little tiny pieces. With the three Mechazar planets claimed, we have only one thing left to say. Deus Vault. In the name of God. In the name of God. In the name of God, we go to heaven. And we have movement from the Mechazar. They are pushing their forces forwards. 30,000 in fleet power. One major engagement should be enough to finish this war. We're going to jump through and fly straight into combat here. There is our detected incoming ships, and here we go. That does seem to be a decisive win for our forces. We are being helped in no small part by the Manticore's fleet. This offshoot of the previous and now defunct Yuru civilization folded neatly and quickly into our crusading structure. We have had to pay what they describe themselves as, as mercenaries. We have had to pay them some energy credits and a small amount of uh, support politically, but for that they have become one of the major arsenals in our weapons against the machines. Our ground forces have now taken Primus 1, the capital of Mechazar space, 
and it is very clear that this is possibly the major reason for the instability in the galaxy. The number, the sheer number of research complexes here must be creating some sort of psychic emanation throughout the galaxy, disturbing regular and lovely biological life. The automatons have been judged, they have been weighed, they have been measured, and they have been found wanting. Following the conquest and destruction and the eventual abandonment of the world Primus One and the surrounding colonies owned and proliferated by the evil automaton race, Proculus Floronius has declared that the crusade is finally over by forming a defensive alliance with the League of Amur, which then represents all in all about half of the galaxy as a single unified diplomatic bloc. It is time to once more be called the Othari Empire. Nestled in the center of the crusade space, the Pashati have awakened. This once fallen empire now go by the name of the Pashati Reconquerors. But will the decrepit fools have anything really to add to galactic politics? The prophet emperor Proculus Floronius, no sooner than the agreement was signed, received communication from the Prashati Reconquerors. They have demanded the complete subjugation of our people, and not just our people, but all peoples under our flag and the League of Immer flags as well. The forbidden technology stashes have been pilfered yet again. Small disruptors able to penetrate both shields and armor have now been retrofitted onto our mighty vessels, and they will go forth to conquest and glory against these Pashati wannabes. Well, we are already receiving reports that the Pashati Reconquerors are pushing deep into our space. Where are the League of Immur? We signed our defensive pact with them. They have not arrived to defend us yet. And what do you think about this video so far, this story so far? Have I been giving the no tech challenge a good go? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this on the channel, please let me know down in the comments below. Unfortunately for our noble and brave fleets, the Pashati Reconquerors have used their fearsome technology. The heresy is strong with these people to jump behind our space and engage us above our capital world. The planet of Genogia has been lost and with it a large chunk of our alloy production, our alloy income. Our defensive forces are giving it a valiant effort, yet the abominations, technological abominations of the Pashati are destroying our defenses. Lives are being lost, Empire space is being lost alone and outmatched, the Othari Empire now stands on the brink of annihilation. With Pashati fleets above our sacred homeworld and our forces in disarray, this is truly our darkest hour. Indeed, could this be our end? Thank the prophets, our hope is renewed. Our allies, those that we feared had deserted us, have finally arrived. Together, our forces may yet turn the tide in this war. The combined fleets of the League and of the Empire are now moving towards the Pashati. Perhaps we will be able to reach our homeworld in time and save the beleaguered defenders here. The majority of the Pashati fleet now is in our home system. Our forces are still years away from being able to return to the capital. If only we had some sort of improvement to our hyperdrive technology that could help us achieve faster flight. The Western territories have largely been lost to these reclaimers and the Velet Citizen Republic, now a prospectorium, a joyous and generous member, is facing some serious threats. Meanwhile, in the midst of the Multics horde, the League of Immur has unfortunately awoken a great Khan. This mighty war host sits next to our capital as well, yet more threat, yet more terror on the horizon. And the great Khan is coming directly for us. Luckily, we are forming up here with a mighty fleet that should give the great Khan some pause for thought. And in one large riposte, we have defeated the great Khan's forces here on the cusp of our territory, picking their way through the wreckage of the great Khan's fleet our explorers have uncovered shocking new information. The Carnate, this great martial threat that has existed on our borders disunited until now, since our return to space a hundred years ago, is actually a remnant of the Othari navy from before the Sundering. Now united under a great Khan, they have unknowingly attacked the worlds their ancestors once swore to protect. Some of their records, which had been sealed to the Carnate, are accessible with the sacred command codes of Atharia of old. 
They have given us new clues as to the true nature of the Cataclysm and the history of the Othari Empire, our empire, some 10,000 years ago. During the reign of Emperor Walpole, the navy faced a formidable enemy. This enemy was encroaching on Othari space, conquering world after world and routing any Othari forces that tried to resist. And then suddenly, the Hyperlane Network, a network of interstellar navigation routes that connected the galaxy, the lifeblood, in fact, of our empire, collapsed. It can only have been the work of this ancient enemy, a weapon unleashed to deal a crippling blow to our empire. This stranded the navy, which was regrouping for a renewed offensive in the depths of space somewhat close to our homeworld. Since then, what was left of our navy has descended into barbarism and chaos. Confined to a space-born life, they slowly became the carnate of today. This new information, shocking as it is, cannot be made public at this time, not with Pashati forces besieging the capital and occupying our worlds. It must be consigned to the vault until such a time as the High Council sees fit to release it. Don Long, one of the first worlds to be liberated from evil technocrats, has now fallen to the Pashati. After the quick repairs, we are now ready, along with the rest of the galaxy, to jump in here to Hades, adjacent to our capital, and put an end to this evil threat, this awakened empire. And here come our allies first leading the fight. We will be shortly behind them. We can only hope that as a collective people, as a unit, we can defeat this fleet, even though there is another fleet after this one. It looks like we've achieved supremacy. Now we must press on and press the attack. Well, that definitely triggered a response from the Pashati, who immediately have jumped into the system. And in this fight, there can be only one winner. Unfortunately, that winner will not be us. The Breglagar system stands in testament to our defeat, to our destruction at the hands of the Pashati. Meanwhile, a second onslaught of the Great Khan's forces does indeed approach. Too late do we realize the true nature of the Cataclysm not a weapon used against the Othari Empire, but a final act of defense, used in a misguided and desperate attempt to protect the homeworld and the billions of lives there from a threat of which they had no knowledge. Our explorers have found clues on a myriad of worlds. There can only be one conclusion. When combined with the databanks of a wrecked Pashati ship, the picture of our past is brought into sharp relief. Once, the Othari Empire, our empire, ruled the known galaxy. This was the natural order of things. For generations, the empire prospered and thrived. The Pashati civilization grew undisturbed in the depths of a nebula. When they finally made their way out into the galaxy, they were shocked to learn they were not alone, that the galaxy was already owned and ruled by others. Their shock became hatred and their hatred became envy. Whilst the apparatus of the Othari state grew lethargic and stagnant, the Pashati waited, hiding in their nebula, biding their time and constructing a vast war fleet. Once the fleet was ready, they launched their attack. Spreading outwards in all directions, they attacked Othari tributes, Othari client states and Othari worlds. Careful to prevent any news or communication from alerting slumbering behemoth of the Athari government. The assault picked up momentum. Within the span of a few years, they had struck deep into the heart of the Athari Empire. They prepared to launch a final, devastating attack on our capital and the surrounding worlds, to finally take their undeserved place as the rulers of the known universe, the Xeno Filth. An Athari scientist then decided to use the weapon. Though we cannot know for certain, it is clear the cataclysm was wrought by our own hands. Indeed, wrought to save and isolate our worlds. And whilst our civilization fell into ruins, rejecting technology, innovation, science, the Pashati had no such issues. Over the last 10,000 years since the cataclysm, their empire rose, reached its zenith and fell of its own accord. It was only through our actions, our revival, 
our crusade that the Pashati were alerted to our survival and continued existence. Their hatred of us runs deep. It was enough to snap them out of their lethargy, and we now face the full might and wrath of a Pashati conquest fleet. For the poor citizens of Atharia, it is really getting quite bleak. Half of the population has now been killed in orbital bombardments by the relentless attacks of these Pashati evildoers. With the destruction of our fleets near the capital, there was little to nothing that could be done to prevent the Pashati from bringing up an abominable weapon of war. Down below on the surface of the planet, the Athori people looked up in fear and wept. The great enemy returned. They have finished the job their ancestors started 10,000 years ago. With the destruction of Atharia and subjugation of countless other Athari worlds, we are now truly a broken people. With the loss of the capital and, unfortunately, residing in the palace, the royal palace on Athori, the prophet emperor was dead. In his place, the emperor in exile, Appia Fabius I, led the Othari remnant for a few bleak remaining years. Those years were met with loss and general destruction. Otharia was gone. The Othari remnant, now in hiding, managed to broker a peace through the diplomatic channels of the League of Immur. This would not save them for long though. Broken and defeated, they quickly gave up their sovereignty and right to rule in return for protection. The disgusting and despicable Galactic Peace Accords, pushed by the League, bound together an area almost as large as our old empire, though it would not last. Very soon, the Scourge arrived clearly drawn to our galaxy by the Empyrean emanations of science and research. At first, they were just a trickle on the galaxy's outer edge, and robustly pushed back by the forces of the Peace Accords. But what started as a trickle soon became a flood. Within a decade, they had reached the shattered world of Atharia. The League fell, their satellite states fell, even the mighty weapons of the Pashati could do little to stem the relentless tide of the Scourge, who have now consumed the galaxy. It is clear now, as we sit in the quiet spaces between systems, hiding, that if only our crusade had been successful, we might have saved the galaxy from this fate. Clearly this is the work of our gods vengeful at the destruction of Atharia and the loss of the natural order. If only the galaxy hadn't been so stupid and blinded, perhaps we could have saved them from themselves. But that is a story for another time. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see what would happen if I confined myself to only a single star system, then you should click the video on screen now.